Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to our respected lecturer Sir Muhammad Shafiq bin Hassan. So in this video we are going to talk about the conditions that lead to trade disputes in Malaysia. But first of all let me explain about the real meaning of trade dispute. A dispute being referred to as trade dispute under the Industrial Relations Act 1967 means any disagreement between the employer and workman or employee which is connected with the employment or non-employment or the terms of employment or the conditions of work of such workmen or employee leading to industrial action. The Industrial Relations Act 1967 governs the relationship between employers and workmen or employees and their trade unions and generally deals with trade disputes. Industrial disputes means any disputes relating to existing industry. It must be a real dispute and the person regarding whom the dispute is raised and the parties to a dispute must have a direct or substantial interest. There are four types of trade dispute in industrial relations which the first and foremost is disputes on right. A dispute arising due to non-fulfillment of rights because of differences in the application and interpretation of the provisions of legislation, agreements, company regulations or cooperative agreements. Next is conflict of interest. This can be defined as a dispute that arising in the employment relationship because of the lack of conformity of opinion regarding Regarding the manufacturer and or changes in the terms of employment applied in labor agreements, company regulations or collective agreements. Moreover, termination of employment disputes is one of the types of disputes where this dispute arising from the absence of opinion regarding the appropriateness of termination by either party. Last but not least is dispute between workers union or labor in one company where this dispute happened between workers or laborers or trade unions but limited in just one company. Due to lack of understanding regarding the conformity of the membership, the implementation of the rights and obligations of a trade union. Discriminatory action taken by an employer deemed unfair or inappropriate is one of the conditions that lead to trade dispute in Malaysia. Most of the law uh, on trade dispute and industrial action is contained in the Industrial Action 1990. The definition of trade union activity is activity carried out with the employer concern or outside working hours, strike or other industrial action are not um, covered by this definition. However, in this day, strike are also subject to action by employers even though they all stem from their workplace. Maybe the employer are not paying their wages for a long time or favoritism with each employees. Therefore, employers should not discriminate against every employee because will have a negative impact on employees themselves uh, and reputation and productivity of the company. All workers must be given equal services. If the employee does or uh, should be one or discuss first what problem the employee is facing so that it can be resolved by not even instead dismissing them without listening to their problems. Thus, employers uh, should consider first before taking any decision plus meet and discuss first with the employee. Employers should not put the blame on just one side because there are several other employees involved as well. This all happened because they have their own reason why they went on strikes. This, this show that this action was inappropriate that made by the employer. The refusal of any party to commence collective bargaining could lead to trade dispute as it can cause a few unwanted problems between the employer and employees. Collective bargaining is a process bargaining between an employer and a group of employees with the goal of reaching agreements on matters such as working salary, working conditions, benefits, and other areas of workers' compensation and rights for employees. 
The parties frequently refer to the agreement reached as a collective bargaining agreement or as a collective employment agreement when describing the outcome of the negotiations. For instance, any terms that the employer gives to the union may now be implemented unilaterally by the employer. Employer may enforce their last offer to the union if the National Labor Relations Board finds that an impasse has been reached. Negotiations must continue if the National Labor Relations Board rules in favor of the union. If this happened, it would cause misunderstanding between the employer and employees. The employer might ex expect that the employer refuse to hear and accept to their rights. When there are any party who are refused to commence with collective bargaining, it will give negative impacts to the company like when there is trade dispute, it will make the environment at the workplace become awkward and worse if it led to a stress working environment. When it comes to those who lack individual negotiating power, collective bargaining can provide a protective function by ensuring proper compensation, setting limitation on daily and weekly working time, and controlling other aspects of working circumstances. Consequently, both employees and employers must make a commitment to working together for the benefit of the organization. They are required to adhere to all of the restrictions outlined in the Employment Act. Taking part in collective bargaining is critical in ensuring that employees and employers come to an agreement on a certain action to take. The first method that can use to resolve the trade dispute is direct negotiation, which is it can be called as a method that can be settled whereby two parties involved are willing to come together for discussion until satisfactory compromise is reached or concluded. It is the best way to resolve because it not involve a third party and do not make to uh, make the problem more worse. This kind of method is more mature and harmonious which is the two parties meet and discuss face to face uh, and solve the problem without use the third party such as law or agency. If the two parties act professionally, they will agree to make a direct negotiation because this kind of way will make the process fast and easier. Truth direct negotiation, the parties uh, collectively retain complete control of the process and its outcome. Together, the parties specify the ground rules and, and schedule, select the professional natural and establish procedure for when and how they communicate, listen and respond. If the parties can come to an agreement during their negotiating process on their own, they save the most amount of time and money. The parties can retain uh, their relationship and even better their future interaction. Second method that can be used is direct action, which is it refers to action that seeks to achieve an end directly and by the most immediately effective means such as using boycott or strike. This action are taken to ensure that the dispute are settled quickly because it considered as an aggressive and threatening method to settle the dispute. Uh, there are two types of direct action and it divides to two types which is to employees and employer. For the employer for the employers there are a picket and strike. Picket refer to a situation that one or more person may attend at or near the workplace for the purpose of peacefully. Meanwhile, a strike is any stopping of work by a group of workers, including any attempt to limit or slow down production on purpose. For type under employers, there is lockout, it is the closing of a place of employment, the suspension of work, or the refusal by an employer to continue to employ any number of workers employed by him in furtherance of a trade dispute done with a view to compel those workers to accept them or condition of work or affecting employment. To summarize, Trade disputes can be avoided if both parties cooperate in the same manner and adhere to the rules and policies set forth in the Employment Act. 
This is due to the fact that the, the elements of the Employment Act are primarily intended to be used by employers and employees as a gesture of goodwill and as a result, they can provide them with benefits. This can be observed in the workers' rights that have been outlined in the Act of Industrial Relations. That's all from us. Thank you.